Hi, I'm Susan. I'm from World Peaceful and been contemplating what would an evolved species really look like. I think many people are looking around the world today and they're wondering about whether we as a species can evolve to a point where we learn how to live with one another, where we rebalance the homeostasis of the planet. Can we move beyond very limited mindsets filled with fear and reach for something higher within all of us? This video is really about sharing with you what a highly evolved species would actually look like and how it would think and see the world. And the invitation that's being offered here to you today is to consider reaching within yourself for the highest aspects of who you really are. When you consistency, consistently live this higher version of yourself, you will become the very thing that you focus on. You know, where focus goes, energy flows. And we are the creator of our own reality on this planet. Each of us are deciding the world that we live in. Some believe it's about terrorism. They believe the world is a bad place. I can tell you from traveling the world, it's not. There's a lot of great people out there. Having been involved in conflict resolution myself, what I know is if conflict is not dealt with, in the early stages, it escalates. People feel aggrieved because they feel some sense of loss. They don't feel understood. They feel powerless. And if we want to stop the violence on the planet, we have to deal with powerlessness and grievances and what they really are. And rather than labelling or demonising people or creating laws to suppress people, what we need to do is to really hear people and train, particularly children, on how to really resolve conflict so that these things don't get out of hand. I think what we can see around the world today is a lot of chest beating and it has potential ramifications for the whole of humanity given the level of consciousness those leaders are currently in. They are where they are and there's many people that are resonating with a similar consciousness and given the technology at people's disposal at these levels there is the potential for great catastrophe. But the solution to humanity will rest within our own ability to question ourselves, to transform conflict, to reach for a higher version of ourselves, and ultimately to awaken us to a new state of being. This is called evolution. So I'll read for you this wonderful material that I have here, which is on the awakening of this species. So it has a number of of numerical points which go up to 16 so I'll read out the 16 points and it's really outlining what an awakened species actually thinks and does. So the first point is an awakened species sees the unity of all life and lives into it. Humans in an, in an unawakened state often deny it or ignore it. Two, an awakened species tells the truth always. Humans in an unawakened state too often lie to themselves as well as others. An awakened species says one thing and will do what they say. Humans in an unawakened state often say one thing and do another. Four, an awakened species, having seen and acknowledged what is so, will always do what works. Humans in an unawakened state often do the opposite. An awakened species does not embrace a principle in its civilization that correlates with the concepts that humans refer to as justice and punishment. Six, an awakened species does not embrace a principle in its civilization that correlates with the concept that humans referred to as insufficiency. So in an awakened species world, there's always enough. So there's no fighting over the limitations that we perceive. Seven, an awakened species does not embrace a principle in its civilization that correlates with the concept that humans refer to as ownership. In other words, we don't own anything. 
This has all been given way before we were born, <laughs> way before that one minute to midnight that we actually exist. <laughs> We've only been here a very short time on the planet and we think we own it. <laughs> Eight, an awakened species shares everything with everyone all the time. Humans in an unawakened state often do not. Only sharing with others in limited circumstances. Nine, an awakened species creates a balance between technology and cosmology, between machines and nature. Humans in an unawakened state often do not. Ten, an awakened species would never under any circumstances terminate the current physical expression of another sentient being unless asked directly by that other being to do so. Humans in an unawakened state often kill other humans without that other human requesting them to do so. Interesting, isn't it, the way that's written? I myself, I won't even step on an ant and I would never want to harm anyone. Um, that phrase, do no harm, is in my DNA. <laughs> I try to do no harm. I might unwittingly hurt someone because I've said something without thinking. But never is my intention ever to hurt anyone. So I can relate to that. 11. An, unawaken, an awakened species would never do anything that could potentially damage or harm the physical environment that supports the members of the species when they are physicalized, that is in a human body or in physical body. Humans in an unawakened state often do so. And we only have to look around the world to see that. No, no thinking around our impact on the environment. We keep producing products that are harmful. We use toxic chemicals and we justify it in the name of profit. This is a really big issue on our planet. 12. An awakened species never poisons itself. Humans in an unawakened state often do so. 13. An awakened species never competes. You might want to repeat that one. An awakened species never competes. I can relate to that. Humans in an unawakened state are often in competition with each other. 14. An awakened species is clear that it needs nothing. Humans in an unawakened state often create a need-based experience. That's interesting, isn't it? So the awakened species need nothing. They know that they're the source of everything. So there's no need is the operative word there. They trust. And I would imagine they, they create, given their level of consciousness. 15. An awakened species experiences and expresses unconditional love for everyone. That one I relate to a lot. <laughs> it's not always un understood. Humans in an unawakened state often cannot imagine even a deity who does this, a deity being a god or something higher, much less do they do it themselves. Imagine if we could love people without condition. What that means is whatever they do, it doesn't prevent us from still loving them. So therefore judgment can't exist. If you're living truthfully in a state of unconditional love, it means that you will love a person no matter what they do. Now someone would say, well, how could you love someone who's causing harm to someone. What we're really saying here is that there is no limits placed on love. In other words, I'm not going to cut off my own ability to love because someone is doing something that's harmful. I am going to perceive myself as love and therefore project love toward that other. And certainly I could say, um, if anybody looks into Peace Pilgrim and her journey, she was an American who awakened walked across the United States seven times. She had nothing. She was penniless. And there was a situation where she was looking after someone's farmhouse and apparently she saw a child running into the barn. A man was chasing the child. So she quietly got up and she walked to the barn and she stood between the man and the child and she stared at him with unconditional love. She said not a word. She just looked at him with love. He looked very hard back at her for a long time. And then he quietly walked away. 
Now, this is the power of love. And this is what is meant by this statement of unconditional love. You do not allow your love to be diminished, not for one minute, because of the actions of someone else. You remain in that state of love. And that's the state of joy and peace that many peacemakers talk about. 16. An awakened species has harnessed the power of metaphysics. Humans in an unawakened state often largely ignore it. So metaphysical, that's the meta beyond the physical. This is the spiritual, some might call it. It's the unseen. Women are very good at picking up on the unseen because we're very deeply intuitive and we live through our emotions, so we feel things very deeply. We can sense what's going on around us quite quickly. And also society allows us to be who we are, whereas for men it's harder because they're often expected to play out a certain role model that appears to be tough, uncompromising. They believe that's strength and it's not. It's rigidity and that rigidity is what breaks men. That's why often men die earlier than women. Men often go to drink, you know, they, alcohol, they take alcohol in order to soothe themselves because their emotions are held down. And, of course, a loving and compassionate society will embrace men and assist them in reconnecting or reintegrating with their emotional being. And that also will be a major step forward uh, in respect of peace on this planet. So that gives you a little bit of an overview of what an awakened species actually looks like. And what I send to you really is great hope or real hope for the future and to awaken into the highest potential of who you really are this is the highest version and the highest vision of how you see yourself keep practicing so if someone whacks you don't hit them back if somebody's unkind to you do not return it with a comment a negative comment if someone's bullying you don't feed it what you do is you speak your truth gently and quietly to people. Do whatever you can creatively to transform the conflict within yourself. Poetry is a great thing. Painting is a great thing. Never see another person as an enemy because there are no enemies in this world. There is only ignorance parading as one. We just need to help people to see another way that we can live on this earth. And we do need to do this fairly rapidly. For the planet is collapsing on many levels. Our environment is most definitely changing. The economic system is not going to be sustainable and isn't sustainable in the future because we're consuming way beyond our ecological footprint. We're all seeking to live lifestyles like the United States and we would need another, five pla another four planets if everybody consumed the same. The planet can't sustain this so it's us that has to change we have to have to learn to be open to new ideas that we've not considered and all i would say to people is just follow your own inner guidance your own resonance you don't have to listen to me just follow what feels true for you and you'll know it's true because you'll feel joy and that's what i send you through this video <laughs> it's great peace love joy and awakening. Bye.